Well, hello, I'm Doug Ample, back with another special interview for you today. And our special guest via the phone line is Mr. Tony Roberts. He is a book publisher, and he's bought a little airtime here on Wave 94. You're going to be hearing his radio commercials, but we're also going to have a little conversation with him about this idea of publishing your book. Now, maybe you have a goal for the year 2022. I'm finally going to publish my book. Well, maybe Mr. Tawny Roberts can help you do that through his company called Landmark Publishing. And in fact, we're going to be giving his personal phone number that you can call or text him if you want. And he can give you the lowdown on how you can go about to get your book published. Welcome to Wave 94, Tawny Roberts. And go ahead and tell us just a little bit about this idea of book publishing and how you got involved in the first place. First of all, thank you very much for having me with you guys here. I want to send a warm greetings to every single person that is listening out there. So my story is a little bit uh, complicated and crazy. So I've been a writer since I remember. When I was a kid, I wrote about anything. In 1997, I survived cancer. I survived cancer and I thought I have a message that needs to be told because I was ready to go. Emotionally, I was ready. Physically, I went to the edge of leaving the, the world and I asked to the Lord for a miracle. I asked for a second opportunity. He granted me that opportunity and I went back to life and I was telling myself, I need to share this with the world. The world needs to know that Jesus gave a second opportunity, that he's all almighty and he gives second chances to people because he gave it to me. So I wrote my story. And I published my first book in 2014. Wow, I was super happy. A lot of testimonies, people telling me beautiful things about what they received when they went through the book. But something was missing. And what was missing it was the guidance of a good publishing company because I was new. I didn't knew too much about it. I made a lot of mistakes because I didn't know. Nobody told me what to do right, what to do wrong. I just wrote the book. So I started searching for a better publishing company. I couldn't find it. I, I, I just couldn't find a publishing company that, that guide me from every step of the way and, and through help me. So I took actions on my own hands and I created my own publishing company, Landmark Publishing. It took me three years of my life to learn everything about the industry. I took all the seminars, all the classes, all the training that you can imagine. And I become an expert on the topic. And by 2020, I published my new two books, Walking by Faith in English, Caminando por Fe in Espanol, and as a testimony that when God is in your side, as a testimony that everything is possible when you are with God, today my books are sold over 68 countries around the globe, and that's a miracle itself. When the two books were published, a lot of friends asking me and, and people that I get to know, refer me to your publishing company so I can do the same, and I said the same. I am the publishing company. This is my publishing company. But then I said, I can help you, but I cannot publish too much because I'm super busy with my own work. About the beginning of last year, I had a conversation with my older brothers, which is one of my authors. I just published a book for him. And he says, I have few friends that I they need help. And I told him, I will love, but I don't have the time. And he said, what about if you pray about it? And I said, you know what? Yeah, you can never go wrong. Pray about it. I want to pray, and the Lord gave me a green light. And that's when I took the decision to open Landmark Publishing to the public to help other authors that were in the same position that I was 10 years ago, that I have no idea where to start, that I have no idea how this works. That's why I'm here today, to help those who have a godly message that needs to be told. You have a testimony. You want to publish a book? I can help you. Now, if you'd like to get a hold of, I'm pronouncing his name, Tony Roberts, and it's sort of like Tony, but it's Tony with two N's, Tony Roberts, and his phone number, and you can call or text him, it's 786-612-1153. I know that went by a little fast, I'll say it again, and I'll say it again later in our conversation. But once again, his phone number, if you already know, hey, I'm interested in publishing a book or I'd like to pass this along to a friend who has been thinking about or trying to get a book published. Here you go. 786-612-1153. And that's going to go right to Tony Roberts himself. It's Landmark Publishing 
He does have a website. It's landmarkpublish.com. And I'll ask you this question, Tony. How'd you come up with the name Landmark? You know what? That's a very good question. My wife and I, we were looking for, you know, a name for our ministry, for our publishing company. And we start praying in our, you know, separately. And one day she says, what about something that mentioned one, something strong? And I was, what about landmark? You know, it's a point of view. And she was like, landmark it is. So today, Landmark Publishing, that's the name that the Lord gave us for our ministry. And how has it been going so far? You've been doing it, I guess, a couple of years now. Wow, it's been a tremendous blessing to be able to help a lot of good people. I have the privilege to get to know uh, new authors and people who have beautiful, tremendous stories that the world needs to hear. And there's a lot of people that they never find a way to make it happen. And the fact that we are blessing today, helping many, many authors out there to publish their books and make their dreams come through, it's beautiful. We've been very, very blessed. Now, what would you say to the person who thinks, I can't afford to get my book published? You cannot afford to live your story into a file cabinet. Mm. I met somebody actually um, six months ago. He, his book was published last month and he had this idea for over 30 years. Over 30 years. He had this idea uh, about a story that happened to him 35 years ago and then he realized that maybe he can put it in the book. And when we met, he says, I cannot continue putting this on hold. People regret when time passed and they realize, well, I could do better. I could do it if I got the opportunity. So by talking to me and find out more, People, we have a lot of answers. And yes, some people will be ready. Some others are going to take a little bit more time. But holding it and leaving it in a file cabinet, it makes no sense. One thing in this digital age, yeah, you can write something and throw it up online. But it seems so flimsy in a way, whereas books, they just hang around once they're published and I just think about the generations to come. You know, this is grandpa's story. This is great grandma's story. This is great, great, great grandma's story. And she wrote a book about it. What do you think about that? That's a beautiful way to say it. I mean, any person can go right now and write a story and put it on, you know, social media and make a video about it. But when you make a formal to publish a book and that book will be available everywhere, Books are sold around the world, and then eventually you will start receiving testimonies when people read your story. That's the best part. That's a beautiful part of it. And that's another one. You keep mentioning the idea of uh, all kinds of countries. Is that something that you help people do, get it out around the world? Oh, yes, yes. Through the platform and the vendors that we have, the partners, basically, for example, my last two books, they are available today in over 68 countries around the globe. Everywhere books are sold or everywhere people have a computer, they can find your book. In this case, for example, we publish books in English and Spanish. We could do it in any other language because of the modern technology. But everywhere books are sold, your book will be there. And I guess that's where people can find your books. Oh, yeah. Amazon, Walmart, Barnes & Noble, Target, Internet, any place books are sold, your book will be there. Well, that sounds like a pretty good way to uh, help get it out. I want you to think for a second. I'm going to share your contact information, but think about some of the people you've worked with and maybe a testimony or two you could share from those who went from where a lot of our listeners are right now, thinking like, I might like to write a book or I think I got a book in me. The old saying is, don't die with the book in you. Get it out of you, <laughs> which means you got to get it published. And Tawny Roberts is your man. His phone number is 786-612-1153. He's, the, he's with Landmark Publishing. Again, his phone number is 786-612-1153. And he's written his own books, a couple of them in English, Breaking for Freedom, his first book, which came out in 2014, and then Walking by Faith. Tawny Roberts, T O N N Y. R-O-B-E-R-T-S, Tony Roberts, 786-612-1153. Since you started Landmark Publishing, Tony, you got any testimonies you could share with us about what you've been able to do for people and what they thought about it when it was done? Oh, yes. <laughs> I have many stories. Actually, just middle of December, I published The Dyson Sphere, 
the Dyson Sphere is a beautiful a Star Wars story about an idea that somebody has. This guy contacted me and, and he says, I had an idea. Maybe it's very, very stupid. And I said, you know what? Don't worry about that. Let me see it. And when I saw the story, I was amazed. I was completely amazed. It took us about four months to work on everything. The book was published December 17. Actually, we published that book in two languages. The Dyson Sphere. You can find it everywhere books are sold. The Dyson Sphere in English, in Espanol, La Esfera de Dyson. And when I saw the story, I said, wow. This should be in a movie. This is a movie material. <laughs> this is a, this is a, this is a movie material that that this guy has, and he feel almost like shame to show it to me because he thought I don't want people to think that I am an idiot, that I am a stupid. And when I saw the, the, the story that I read it, I was wow. Oh, where you get this from? Where you get this from? So just an, a normal dude, just a normal guy, put together in a story that is a movie material. That is something beautiful. There's a lot of people out there that they wrote something, that they had an idea, that, that they put together a story. I want to listen to that because some of those stories, they could be a movie material. And I see this a Dyson Asphere become a movie. We're going to make the way there. That will be a movie. Yeah, I think about, especially these days, it's not just uh, Hollywood movies, but all the streaming platforms, you know, from Netflix and Amazon and on and on and on, Apple TV, and they're creating their own movies and TV shows. The need for good scripts and good, fresh new stories has never been greater. And one way to help say, hey, this is a story that has some weight to it is to have it in an actual book. Rather than, you know, you talk to some producer and say, hey, I've got an idea for a story. Well, if you have it already in a book, wow, that really makes it more substantial, don't you think? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. I'm working right now in another story. So this author, this lady called me about two months ago and I told her, tell me your story. What do you have? And she says, "Okay, this is what happened to me. When I was seven years, I drowned into a pool and I was clinical dead for about seven to eight minutes. Wow. And during that time, yes, when she was talking to me, I was like, I get goosebumps. And she was telling me her story. Basically, she was clinically dead for about seven to eight minutes. She saw angels. She saw Jesus. She saw her life. She saw many things. And she had a story that is like, do you have a, a, a title for this story? She said, no. Okay, let's just start working together. I came back, come back with the, with the title, seven minutes. Mm. seven minutes in heaven she was dead for seven minutes and we're about to publish that so and yes i also see that story becoming a movie and like you just said most movies that we see today they started with a book because it's easier people can pick it up read it contact the publishing company we want to put your story into the big screen Mm. let's do it a lot of powerful stories are waiting to be told If you have one in you, you're listening right now and you think, well, maybe I should pursue this idea of getting my story published into a book and you don't know who to contact or how to do it. You can talk to Tawny Roberts, T-O-N-N-Y-R-O-B-E-R-T-S. Tawny Roberts, his phone number, and you can call or text him 786-612-1153. I'll give you a second so you can write it down. It's 786-612-1153. And now, Tony, you told us a little bit about your own story, and you said it was back in 97 that you had cancer. You survived, but can you share us a little more of that testimony? Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you for asking me. So I was 23, and one day out of the blue, I felt something that was like a flu. Okay, take Tylenol, you know. Everything fine. I have fever for about five days, nonstop. So I went to the doctor. He told me, you're fine. Continue taking Tylenol. But I started dropping weight in a very alarming way. I was losing about between five to 10 pounds per week. Wow. Yes. A small one was growing in my neck and was visible. A month later, I was about 45 pounds less. And that was very, very alarming. So they decided, uh, they did a lot of tests, anything that you can imagine, blood tests, scans, MRI, anything that they could do. They they could find nothing in my body. 
I said that ball in my neck, that, that lung in my neck. And they took me to the hospital and they're going to do a biopsy in my neck. So they, they, they took me to surgery. And I remember my regular weight, which is today the same, it's 180 pounds since I become an adult. That's my normal weight. The day that they do the surgery, I remember Friday, six o'clock in the morning, and the guy told me, come as I'm here in the scale. I was 112 pounds. Hmm. Oh, yeah, I, I was uh, irrecognizable. Actually, during this time, I, I didn't allow my mother to see me. My brother saw me a week before the surgery, and he says, I will not allow mama to see you. If mommy see you this way, she will have a hard time. So they took me to the surgery. They opened my, my neck. They structured my neck, two balls the size of a golf size, and they took it to the lab. When I woke up seven hours later, or five hours later, something like that, um, they came to me and they tell me, listen, it's confirmed. You got a cancer in the lymphatic system. And they told me, you're going to be able to make it. You're 23, you're young and healthy. You're going to make it. So let's schedule the chemo to start chemo in a week. Let's wait until you recover a little bit so we can remove the stitches. Let's start chemo. And I was, okay, let's do it. When I went to my home, I don't know. I knew in my heart that I won't make it. I already lose like 75 pounds. I am 112 pounds. I am completely beat up by this illness. I just don't think that I got in me what it takes to overcome this situation. And I remember at that time, I used to be the youth pastor in my church. At that time, I was living actually in Puerto Rico. I won college in Puerto Rico, and I still there for about five years. So I was the youth pastor, and I already signed in like four months ago to go to a mission trip to Haiti. But I completely forgot. So one of the leaders called me and, and she said, listen, um, I know that this is not the best time, but you sign in for this. So should we cancel the payment and everything you did or you want to go? And I told her, um, let me pray about it. Let me pray about it. I want to pray. And I decided um, before I pray to call my, my head doctor and ask him, you know, for his opinion. And I, it, and I said, doctor, you know, I'm, I'm battling this situation, but um, I got this trip coming. Should I go? And he said, why you want to go? And I said, doctor, I really, really appreciate everything that you're doing for me. You, you, you've been for me like a father. You're, you're, you're wonderful. But I just don't think that I'm going to make it. And before it's too late, I want to do something good for other people beside myself. And he said, and, and these words changed my life. He says, if you believe that going to help others going to help you, go. Because the faith acts over matters. For me, that was a green light from heaven. I took everything that you can imagine, uh, Tylenol, uh, medicines, everything that I needed, and I went to Haiti in the mission trip. I was over there for seven days, and God opened my eyes in Haiti to a different world. Because, you see, here in America, we have everything. Everything that you can imagine, we have it. But we are very ungrateful. We don't give thanks to the Lord for anything. And I feel very bad when I saw people that doesn't have no even a shoes to wear. Being so grateful into the church, worshiping the Lord when they have nothing. I feel completely in shame myself. And in that moment, I asked to the Lord that give me an opportunity. I said, the Lord, Lord, give me another chance. And I promise you that I will be better. Give me another opportunity. The trip finished. I went back to Puerto Rico. And I remember we landed in Puerto Rico on Tuesday. And my chemo was supposed to be on Thursday. I, when I went into my bed, I remember like just TKO, like, like when you go to bed and you don't know nothing about yourself until, until you open your eyes again. When I open my eyes again next morning, I feel different. Something was different. I have energy. I could stand without feeling dizzy. The pain in my body disappeared and I just start crying, thanking to the Lord, giving thanks to the Lord that he already gave me that opportunity. And I remember I called the doctor and I told him what happened. And he says, take it easy. Most people, when they are in this situation, one day they feel awesome. Next day they feel bad. Take it easy. But come over. Let me check you. I want to see the doctor. And he do an MRI. He do the scan. They couldn't find nothing on my body. Mm. All the other lungs that I had in my ankle, that I had in the, in the other arm, um, everything disappeared. That was summer 1997. Three months later, I was back in my 180 pounds. 
And when, when time passed, I, I realized I have a story that I need to share with the world. The world needs to know that the Lord He's so wonderful that he gave you a second opportunity because he gave it to me and I wasn't the best person at that time. I didn't deserve a, a, a check on sense. I did not, but he gave it to me. And that's what I decide. I, I need to share my story with the world. And is that what's in the book Breaking for Freedom? It is in the book Breaking for Freedom. It is in the book Breaking for Freedom. I did a little bit of the summary in, in the second book, uh, Walking by Faith. In both books, it's my story. That's something that, that I had in my heart. People need to hear. People need to hear that Jesus gives a second opportunity, that there is a second chance that's available when you go to the Lord. I think of the body of Christ, and we all have a part in the body of Christ. I kind of think of how God is doing different things in each one of us, He's given each one of us different gifts and callings, stories and testimonies. And it really seems to me like God tells this one something and that one something. He reveals something to that one and to that one. And then he leaves it up to them to share it with the rest of the body. And I see this work a lot of times and I think, God, why don't you just tell everybody And I have the biblical example. You have Saul who became Paul. Saul gets saved. Jesus himself talks to him on the road to Damascus. So Jesus is talking to him from heaven, but doesn't tell him everything. He says he has to go see, I think it was Ananias. Well, you'd think, all right, well, why does Ananias have to be involved? Jesus, you're talking to him. Just tell him what he needs to know. But no, he involves other parts of the body of Christ, as we call the church. So he has to get Ananias involved. And now Ananias has to tell Paul some things. What an interesting way that God goes about it. I don't know why he does it. But he is wanting me to tell you and you to tell the next one. And for whatever reason, he uses all of us individual parts of the body to share different things that he wants us to share. Well, in some people who are listening right now, he wants you to write a book. He wants you to put it into a book. You have a story. You have a testimony. You might have a fictional story with a powerful message in it. You might have your own life story that you want to tell. You can put it into a book. You don't know how to put it into a book. Landmark Publishing, kind of new on the scene, but as you've already heard the story today, if you heard it, Tony Roberts found a way to do it himself since he couldn't find the exact company to help him in the way that he was looking for help, and he formed Landmark Publishing. You can call him, 786-612-1153, that's 786-612-1153, Tony Roberts. It's like Tony Roberts, but two N's in his name. And as we wrap up our time here today, Tony, this is your chance to just go ahead and give your appeal to the folks who are sitting there. They're kind of sitting on the edge. They don't know whether they can make a decision or not. They don't know if they should call you or not. Maybe they're not even sure. I don't even know if I could really write a book or not. Talk to those people and and give them your message for them. Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me here. If any person out there have a testimony, have any story that needed, that needs to be told, I can help you. Or maybe you just have uh, the dream in your heart that you want to become a writer and you want to see your book around the globe. I can help you. I was in the same situation. I had a story. I want to become a writer and I did it myself. And if I did it myself, I can definitely do it for you. So if you want to talk to me, you have any question about how this works, just give me a call. I'd be glad to talk to people. And that number again is 786-612-1153. It's Landmark Publishing. The website is landmarkpublish.com. But the best thing is to just uh, cut to the chase, as we say. Just get right into it. Just call Tani yourself, Tani Roberts, 786-612-1153. 1153. He's bought a little airtime here on Wave 94. You're going to be hearing the ads as well. We have some commercials, so we have this uh, interview, but we, we also have the commercials, so even if you forget about it later, or if nothing else, you can call us here at Wave 94, and we'll get you in touch with Tony Roberts. And Tony, thanks for your time today. Thank you. God bless you guys.
And God bless you, too. And for Wave 94, I'm Doug Apple.